Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. We are a community church that deeply cares about you. All ministries were created to meet individuals' needs. In Bethel Assembly, we are a Bible-believing church charged with spreading the Word of God throughout the region of Durham. We are interested in your God-given potentials and wanted to help you to be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. We, we care about you. Welcome to your Bethel experience. I want to welcome every one of us to the presence of the Lord today. Remember, wherever you are gathered, wherever you are joining us, whether in the sanctuary or in your own house, the presence of the Lord is with you, and wherever you are becomes better. And it's my prayer this morning that the God of Bethel will not only visit you, but in this new month of glory, that glory of the Lord will come upon you. Amen. I said that glory of the Lord will come upon you. Amen. That glory will separate you will distinguish you, will cause you to be celebrated in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. I want to welcome us into the presence of the Lord today, the first day in the month of August. It also happens to be at Thanksgiving. I'm going to be sharing with us this morning on the theme for this month, talking about the glory of the Lord. And then after that, we'll go into our Thanksgiving offering. But I want somebody to be excited because glory is coming your way. Amen. I said glory is coming your way. Amen. Glory is coming your way Amen. this month. Amen. And you will not miss your visitation Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. Be reading the scripture from verse 1. Let's read it again to verse 3. Talking about the glory of the Lord. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And whose glory? The glory of the Lord is risen upon who? Upon you. Verse 2. It says, For behold, the darkness covered the earth, and gross darkness covers the people. He said, but the Lord shall do what? Shall arise upon you. And his glory shall be seen upon this. And the Gentiles, by the reason of what they will see, by the reason of what they will hear, the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. The glory of the Lord. Beloved, we started on Friday during the VG talking about glory. And I remember telling us specifically that when we're talking about the glory of the Lord, we're talking about the abiding presence of God. We're talking about the abiding presence, the ever-present presence of the Lord. When the presence of the Lord is with a man, glory will follow. When the presence of the Lord is in the life of a man, people would not mistake that presence for anything else. Hallelujah. And we also talk about the fact that each and every one of us as children of God, God has already released his glory. Just like we saw in our test. He said the glory of the Lord is already upon you. For every child of God. The glory has been released. I said for every child of God the glory has what? Has been released. 
Now, we also emphasize that there is the promise of glory. There is the promise of God for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. But do you know that a promise will remain a promise until a man will decide that, no, I am going to do what? I am going to tap into this promise. We remember that woman with the issue of blood. She knew that Jesus is passing by. And this is my own time to receive that promise. Despite all the obstacles in her way, she made up her mind that no, today, this promise will not remain a promise, but it will come to manifestation. Hallelujah. And we also talk about the fact that each and every one of us, you see, for God's glory to come down, your vessel cannot be a vessel that is what? That is not pure. Because the glory of God, our God is holy. He said, be ye holy, even as he is holy. And so, the glory of God will not come upon a vessel that is not pure, that is not sanctified. Praise God. And we saw in the book of uh, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11, talking about the priests. The priests themselves have to sanctify themselves before they can come into the tabernacle, into the presence of the Lord. Without sanctification, amen, without sanctification, they cannot walk, they cannot wait in the presence of God to carry out their duties. And so I emphasize to us on Friday that I don't want you to be satisfied with the promise of glory. What do you and I have to do in order to receive the manifestation? You must be what? You must be sanctified. Hallelujah. And we also talk about the fact that not only must you be sanctified, you must abide in fellowship. The priest, when they come before the presence of the Lord, what are they coming to do? They are coming to lead the people of God into the presence of God, into fellowship with God. And when you are in fellowship with God, that is when you will see God. Amen. That is when you will do what? You will see him. Talking about Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu in Exodus 24 from verse 9. Moses brought them into the presence of the Lord. The Bible said they saw God. Praise God. Exodus 24. They saw God. And not only did they see God, they fellowship with God. Praise God. Your eyes will be open. I said your eyes will be open to see God. A man cannot receive the fullness of the glory of God if you cannot see him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Moses went further and said, I am not only going to stay in this place with these people. We have all seen God, but I'm not satisfied. I want to go further. And the Bible says in verse 11, he went ahead. Amen. Of all the others, after they have sat down and fellowship with God, he now went further from verse 15. He went further into the mount. And the Bible says, he tarried in the presence of the Lord. He stayed there for six days. You want glory to be revealed. You must not be satisfied. You must not be satisfied with the state that you are. You must be ready to come before the presence of the Lord all the time. For six days, he was enjoying the glory of God. And on the seventh day, God called him and said, come up. And they went into the midst of the cloud. Praise God. I'm here to tell someone this morning. God wants to reveal his glory. And I've said this before. It's, we talk about Moses. It's not only the ministers, it's not only the pastor, it's not only the priest that God wants to reveal his glory upon. He wants to reveal that glory upon every one of us. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. The scripture says, but we all. Now, all. Does he exclude anyone? Hello? Hello, church? The word all. Means everyone. So, whether you're a student, 
whether you are a teen, whether you are uh, a teenager or a young professional, you are a man or you are a woman, whether married or not, how many of us, all of us, you say, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. God wants every one of us to see his glory. And I have good news for someone. In this month, the eighth month, you will see his glory. Amen. I said you will see his glory. Amen. And so the promise is for every one of us. But how many people are ready to experience that glory? How many people are ready to reflect that glory? How many people are ready to enjoy that glory? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 5. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 5. Each and every one of us, God wants to reveal. And when God reveals something, it is not only for you alone to see. The Bible said the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And how many people will see it? Everybody will know that you have experienced glory. It is not something that you will tell them in the corner. It is not something that you will tell them secretly. No, it will be evident. It will be obvious. I pray for someone once again. That by the reason of the glory of God upon your life this month, your life will move forward. Amen. Will make progress Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm just going to mention one or two things that will happen when glory is revealed. We're still going to talk about this topic throughout this month. But I want you to be prepared and not to settle for anything less than the glory of God. Now, let's look at it this way. When we're talking about the glory of God, we're talking about what makes God God. Amen. The children of Israel in the wilderness, Moses asked for that glory of God, for the presence of God. And God says, I will send my angels ahead of you that will take care of you. And Moses said, no, Lord. If your presence, if your glory is not going to be with us, I am not going to go anywhere. Beloved, we all as children of God, having received Christ into our life, there are certain things that God wants to do through us. You see, the nature of God. When you fellowship with him, when Moses went up into the mount, 40 days and 40 nights in the place of fellowship. And just like each and every one of us, every time you express love to someone, every time you express the favor of God to someone, the goodness of God, every time you help somebody, who takes the glory? Who takes the glory? What will the people see in you that will make them to know that, yes, this person have experienced God? What will they see in you? It's glory. You see, when that glory is in you, it is God that will now reveal that glory, will manifest that glory to others. It is not something that you will decide that, yes, I want to manifest. No, it is God that will cause you to be a blessing to others. All eyes shall see it because the glory shall be revealed through you. God is still looking for vessels. God is still looking for men in our generation that will stand out in various areas of their life, in career, in ministry, to reflect, to radiate the glory of God. And so what will happen when the glory is revealed? Number one, I said there will be miracles, signs, and wonders when glory is revealed. Amen. There will be what? Miracle, signs, and you will become a sign and a wonder to your generation. Hallelujah. In the book of John, chapter 11, verse 4. John, chapter 11, verse 4. Now, this is the story of Lazarus. When glory is revealed, what will happen? Jesus had, talking about Lazarus, he was sick, 
And it was at the point of death. And he told them, this sickness is not unto death. But for what? He said, but for the glory of who? God wants to showcase, I said it uh, on Friday, that God is still looking for vessel that he wants to put on a display. Hallelujah. And it will showcase you to the world. Because the glory, when it comes upon you, it will be evident. This sickness is not unto them, but for the glory of God. It said that the Son of God might be glorified. Are we together? And so, whatever it is that you are passing through, and you think God did not know about it, it is that his name might be glorified. Praise God. If you go down to verse 32, verse 32. And so Jesus delayed. Amen. And when Mary was come near Jesus, was she saw him, she fell at his feet saying, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. I want someone to know that you serve a God who knows the end from the very beginning. The one who caught the things that be not as though they were. He's still on the throne. And so, the story of your life, as long as you are in the will of God, we always have an happy ending. Praise God. We always do what? Have an happy ending. And Jesus looked at Mary. You did not know who is standing before you. He says the resurrection and life is here. And she said, yes, I know. You will rise up at the end, at the latter day. Jesus said, no, you don't understand the mystery. Because I am here. And wherever my presence is, glory followed me. Go down to verse 40. Uh, from verse 38. Let's start from 38. Each and every one of us, there is something that I want you to pick from this scripture. Jesus himself, when he came to the grave, he saw the situation. He groaned. He saw the situation. He was not only dead for this. They have already buried him and they seal up his tomb with what? With a stone. That means the situation is already what? Open. Less. Hallelujah. In verse 39. And Jesus told them to take away the stone. And Martha was still protesting. He said, Lord Jesus, he's already dead for this. He's already stinking. I don't know the situation and circumstances that life has thrown you. I'm here to tell you when glory visits you, that situation will give way. Because God is the one that specializes in miracle signs and wonders. And in verse 40, Jesus said unto her. And if you remember on Friday, this was emphasized. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if you will only do what? Believe. Thou shalt see the glory of God. Church, this morning, all I want you to do is to do what? Believe. Do I have a witness in the house? All I want you to do is to believe. Whatsoever he asks you to do, just believe. Because glory will follow. I said glory will follow. And so Jesus showed up. In verse 43, Jesus released his watch. He gave thanks to the Father. And when he had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, saying, Lazarus, the resurrection and life is here. I command you, comfort. And what happened in verse 44? The one who was dead came forth, bound, and, and foot with the grave cloth. So that people are not going to say, maybe he fainted. And they can still see he was still wrapped in the Grave cloths. When glory is revealed, there will be miracle, there will be signs, there will be wonders. If you also look at an example, another example, in the same John chapter 5 from verse 8 and 9. John chapter 5 from verse 8. This is a man that was 
in a particular spot for 38 years. Hallelujah. Hopeless. And when glory visited him, in that particular state, Jesus told him, rise up, take your bed and walk. And what happened? Immediately. Let me tell you this. You see, when God wants to reveal his glory, there will be no doubt. Now, everybody knows this man in that spot. They know he has his own corner there. And so, they can point to the fact that this man is not in this corner again. Because something drastic, something miraculous must have happened. Jesus told him, take up your bed, rise up. And immediately, he rose up. What can the glory of God not do? Because God wants to take glory over your life. And so there is nothing that God cannot do on your behalf. Praise the Lord. Let's move on very quickly. Number one, I said when glory is revealed, there will be what? Miracle, signs, and wonder. That cannot be denied. People can say one thing or the other. Maybe, but, might. But in this case, it will be evident. They cannot dispute it. Someone who has been there for 38 years. And someone who was dead. Not just dead for one day. But he was dead for four days. Already buried. Let's go on. When glory is revealed. You and I as believers. We're going to arise. And shine. I said you will arise. And you will shine. As a result of what? It's glory. And that Isaiah 60 from verse 1. It says, arise, shine. It's a commandment. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's why you must arise. That's why you must shine. God wants you to be... Look at verse 3. When, you are, when the glory is revealed... Other people, Gentiles, unbelievers, they will come to your light. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. What will cause them to come? The glory. Are we together, church? God is still looking for vessels. God is still looking for volunteers. Is he going to find one in you? He's looking for people that wants to release his glory upon their life to showcase them. When you also look at the man Moses, we talked about him earlier. When he went into the mount, praise God. He was there for 40 days and 40 nights. By the time he came back, as a result of the glory of God radiating over his life, people could not even behold his face. Exodus chapter 33, verse 11. Exodus 33, verse 11. Each and every one of us, there is a measure of glory that you have enjoyed. But I want you to know the best is yet to come. I said the best is yet to come. The Bible says here, the Lord spake unto who? Unto Moses. How? Face to face. As a man speaks unto his friend. If you go to chapter 34 from verse 29. 34 from verse 29. When we're talking about glory. Brethren, for someone, your life from this month. I decree once again, as a result of the glory of God. People will thank God on your behalf. When Moses came down from the mount with the two tablets, he did not know. The scripture says he wished not that the skin of his face showed while he did what? He talked with him. He was not aware. Verse 30. Now, why was he not aware? Because the presence of God is filled with his glory. And so in that presence of the Lord, he would not have known anything. But when he came down, when Aaron and all the children of Israel, when they saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone. And they were what? They were afraid to come close to him. 
Why? The glory will distinguish you. The glory will separate you. The glory will set you apart. Go down to verse 34. Every time Moses now go back into the presence of the Lord, he will remove the veil. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when he will come to talk to the children of Israel, he will put back the veil. When the glory of the Lord comes down, your life will shine. I said your light will shine. It will be evident. Let's have one or two more. And then we're still going to take our thanksgiving. When the glory is revealed, there will be the abiding and divine protection of God. As a result of his glory. In Isaiah chapter 4. Verse 5. For someone. Thank you Lord. Holy Spirit. The scripture says here, the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion. The Lord said for someone, over your life, my glory will be a defense. Amen. My glory will be a defense. Amen. He said, by my glory, I will defend you. I will create upon your dwelling. Upon your habitation, by my glory, I will make it a place of refuge. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the glory is revealed, there will be divine protection. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, from verse 16. The children of Israel, when they left the land of Egypt. Amen. When they left the land of Egypt. The presence of the Lord was with them. God kept them. The enemy was not able to attack them. In fact, at a point, the scripture says, uh, let's read that one before we read this. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. Exodus 13, 21. The Bible says, the glory of the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud. Amen. To lead them in the way. And behind them in a pillar of fire. Divine protection. Even when Pharaoh and all his souls wanted to attack them. They pursued them. The glory of the Lord prevented the enemy from taking them back to captivity. I pray for someone. That every spirit of Pharaoh that wants to take you back to Egypt. Every spirit of Pharaoh that wants to cover the glory of God over your life. The Lord has already given you victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There is a man of God. Called. Elisha. Amen. And that's the second king chapter 6. Verse 16. He was on the mount with his servants. And the scripture says there were hosts surrounding them. Hosts. And the servant was afraid. And the man answered, don't be afraid. For they that are with us are more than they that are with them. Look at verse 17. He now prayed. He said, God, open the eyes of this young man that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes and he saw what did he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire when the glory of God is upon you the enemy will not be able to afflict you the sons of the wicked will not be able to exact you glory let me give us one more and then we're going to Take a word of prayer. When the glory is revealed, the heavens will be open. Amen. I said the heavens will be open. Amen. We all know the account of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. At his baptism, he went into the water. And when he was baptized, 
and he came out. The scripture says the heaven were open. The glory of God is the maker of a man. But when glory is upon you, God wants you to operate under open heavens. When the heavens over the life of a man is closed, that's why that person will continue to struggle in life. But when the heaven is open, Jesus operated during his ministry under open heavens. There's also another man in the scripture called Stephen. Acts chapter 7 from verse 55. Acts chapter 7. He was ready to die for the cause of the gospel. Because God wants you and I to be a carrier of his power. And when he was ministering, when he was preaching, he did it with all boldness. And he saw what was waiting for him. The Bible says he, being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked steadfast into heaven and saw what? The glory of God. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God to welcome him. Amen. 56. When the heaven over a man is open, it does not matter what are the powers that can come against you. It is important for you to know that open heaven is as a result of the glory of God. And he saw the heavens open. He saw the Son of Man standing. Do you know why God must open your eyes now? Do you know why you must live a life of holiness and sanctification? When Moses came before the presence of the Lord, he was there for seven days before God asked him to come up to the mount. And so this month, church, I don't want to assume we have been talking about glory, but this is different. I said this is different. I don't want you to talk about it alone. I don't want you to even pray about it alone, to sing about it, to shout it. I want you to experience it. I want you to enjoy it. I want God to showcase his glory in your life. Let's rise up. But I will say this, beloved. The only thing that can hinder the glory of God in the life of a man is sin. Amen. It's what? It's sin. Romans uh, chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned. What did sin cause? Sin will cause a man to come short of the glory that God has ordained for him. And so if you are not giving your life to Christ, this is your first step. Because God wants to reveal his glory in you. I don't want you to come short of his glory. That's why you must give your life to Christ. And if you have not given your life to Christ, just like Moses cried to God in uh, Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. Exodus 33, verse 18. And that will be your prayer. I know you have experienced glory before. You have enjoyed a level of glory before, but I'm here to tell you greater glory is ahead. Amen. Oh, I said greater glory is ahead. Amen. Moses, when he now saw the glory of God, he requested for more. He said, God, show me more of this glory. I want you to pray for yourself. Whichever one is your own portion. If you have given your life to Christ, your own prayer will be, Lord Jesus, come and save me because I want to enjoy glory. But if you have given your life to Christ, I'm here to tell you that there is still glory ahead. Moses cried to God, I beseech you, show me your glory. Go ahead and pray. And say, Father, show me your glory. I want to see more and more and more and more and more of your glory. I refuse to be satisfied with the level of glory that I have now. Show me your glory in this month of glory. I am not going to settle for anything less than your glory. Oh, for your glory. Oh, for your glory. I would do anything. Show me your glory. 
Show me your glory. But every one of us, each and every one of us must enjoy this glory, must encounter this glory, must reflect this glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, I want to thank you for the month of glory. There is a new wave of glory coming. I pray for every one of us that will be a partaker in the name of Jesus. Lord, that is the glory of the sun, that is the glory of the moon, that is that of the stars. And for every of your children today, I pray that none of them will miss their visitation of glory. Oh, none of them this month will miss their visitation of glory. There is the glory that distinguishes, that separates. I pray, Father, that in the name of Jesus, as they go in the journey of these eight months, your glory will go ahead of them. Your glory will sustain them, will preserve them in the name of Jesus. By his glory, you will be celebrated in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be thy name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Let's celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. Thank you for joining us today. We hope your better experience was blessed. Join us next time here in the sanctuary. You can drive in, carpool, or reach out to our transportation team for assistance. Our services hold every Sunday at 10 a.m. Stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org. See you next time.